Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, May 16th, 2019. I'll hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you had a good trading day. The market seemed okay today, which is good. You just got to focus on price, action, and tape. And that's exactly what we did. So we're going to talk about OTLK, VTVT, DHX, OCSL, TNK, and Zynga. And then a little update later on the Cisco and Love Calls. Okay, so let's get started with uh, OTLK. Well, you know what? OTLK was on the pre-market scanner this morning. And I did alert this call pre-market, actually. And uh, one thing I really like to look at when I am looking at stocks is I actually also like to pay attention to the news and I also like to look at the volume and the actual um, float and on OTLK in particular um, I alerted that this morning pre-market and the price that I alerted this this morning was at $1.32 and I said the resistance would be 155 and that if it broke 155 um, this could probably have a continuation now i want to just remind everyone that there were, there was an offering on the stock and the offering was for 275 and there was also a lot of insider buying here of about three million shares after the offering so uh the earnings are out they talked about what they're going to be doing with their capital and um you know the company obviously is, is making some changes here and trying to take the company back on track so regardless of you know of all of that at this end of the day we have to also pay attention to the chart and tape action and so obviously we could see this morning there was over two million shares in the morning pre-market on this being traded uh the other thing too on outlook therapies um you know if you look at the actual volume for the day on this stock on otlk um let me just pull it up here we show 51.15 million and, you know, the float's a, bit, a little over 11. You know what? That float's been rotated five times. So uh, when that happens, you can anticipate the high of date to be broken. And uh, we'll have to see what tomorrow's going to show us on Outlook Therapeutics. So, Jim, I'll transfer it over to you now to talk to us about the chart. All right. Well, this is the chart. This is the daily chart we looked at today, and it was definitely a bull all day long yesterday it was at a low of 85 cents and it kind of hovered at the bottom there right around 86 hit it a few times there at 88 but uh today right out of the gate she bounced up with some pretty big gaps up to 111 and then you know i i came in and i seen it pull back to about 118 117 and i said you know it looks kind of attractive right here and she ran up on the trend line, followed the trend line all the way up until close here, and we almost hit us a double top. We did have a 177 high with a resistance level right around the 175 area. But I'm going to pull up the year's chart and take a good look at it. And it did have a high up here at one time in that period up here at 1096, and then had some real bad three black crows three days in a row right here and sold off. Then you had a big gap down. So yesterday was at year low at 85 cents. And then today we had the big run. It was upgraded by Oppenheimer to $12. It, previous volume on this trade right now, I think daily was under 1 million, if I remember right. Yeah, something about like that. Daily average is about 2 million is what it says here. So today we had a real big volume spike on it. And then after hours, it's jumped up. And it did pull back a little bit, but social media was pretty happy about it today. And uh, like Miss Vegas said, it just had an offering. I think it probably closed that offering and insider buying going on. So I'm going to call support on this thing. I mean, we got to break that resistance up here at 175 to 177 to bring it up to the new resistance of 186. And let me, I think I've charted this out even higher, so I'm going to pull up the 20 day. And then magnify this pull it back just a little bit so I've got three different resistance levels this 167 the 177 and then right after that's going to be the 186 and I actually think it can go higher than that 187 yep right there and then I have the gap that we got to fill 
and that's at 303. So that's a huge gap from 187 to 303, but that's what needs to be filled. And let me pull back and give you a low support on this trade right now. Bring it to a three minute. And I'm going to put a new trend line right here at 163. I don't think it can go any lower than the 147. That's going to be your low, low support with a pivot with the first resist support here at 157. And we got to break those other three resistances. And that's O T L K. Keep her on watch tomorrow. The next one we're going to talk about is VTVT. Yeah, so VTVT. Well, let me tell you something that's very interesting about this stock. So I like to track also insider buys and also uh, Form 4 and 13Gs. And I was tracking the insider buying track on VTVT. And I was really surprised to see that most recently... Um, there was some serious buying on this particular stock, in particular, uh, $2.5 million of the stock. So let me just see if I could show it to you guys in a second. But, uh, you know, VTVT, uh, when I saw that, the purchase price, I believe, was $1.86. And I thought, well, if the insider bought this the other day, and I'll show it to Jim. Jim, if you go to the um, yeah. insider buying tracker in the Discord there, I don't know if you can see it. No. It is there. Do you see it? Uh-uh. I'll have to send it to you. Uh, anyhow, so uh, Mr. Uh, Ronald Perlman, he, he's an owner of the company. Uh, he bought uh, actually yesterday 1.358 million shares at $1.84. So you know what? When I like when I see something like that, I'm thinking, well, your earnings are not till May 22nd. So let's keep a watch on this stock. So I decided to take a swing trade position, knowing at the same time that the actual stock really wouldn't have support until at least 165. So I was waiting to add more at the 165. I was able to add more actually at 161 because it did finally get to 165. And Jim, I'll send you the, the screenshot there. And um, when it got to 165 and then it pulled back, I grabbed more shares there at the 161. So I am swing trading the stock on VTVT really because of the nice heavy insider buying. And uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing here on the action that also this show today. Uh, so, Jim, over to you on VTVT. Okay, VTVT. It was a pretty good call today. I think Stock Authority mentioned it in the room also. And uh, so we're going to pull up the year's chart here. I've got it all trend lined out. We've got the one year. Look at that thing. That's a mess if you look at it. I've been really watching this stock. been playing it quite a bit. So I'm going to magnify this down. We did have a year high at 609 with a resistance level right around 450. And I've got to change this over. A double top resistance right there at 394 and 450. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day. Check it out. We've had a nice run today from this 149 level up to 166 that's where I have that 167 resistance you see we tried to break that before so we got us a double top working on it I'm gonna pull back support right here right around 162 and another one right here right around the 159 area so I'm gonna pull up the three month now see if I can find a new resistance high that we can get to I'm using my extended trend lines Three month high right at 171. And then we've got another one right here, which I kind of like this area, run 75. And then we got to bring it up to 182 and 195 after that. And we've got a gap we got to fill. And we have resistance level right here at two bucks. And then we have that gap. It's going to be right here at 208. So those are the resistance levels. Pullback support is going to be right here, right around the 157, 156 area. We're at 165 right now. I'm going to pull up the daily three minute. Take a good look at it here. So I'm thinking support level is going to be no lower than 152. And that's 
and then your first support is going to be right around the 159 area and then we got to break the resistance of 167 which is a double top and then we'll move up to the other resistance levels and those are going to be 175 182 and then 195 up in that area so this is VTVT VT, and keep her on watch and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be DHX okay so DHX this company is is called DHX but they are DHI group they're a staffing and outsourcing company and um, if you go to their website you can see that they actually do um, specialized in uh, talent management for technology, security clearance, and financial services. And, um, you know, if you're looking for work, you can obviously um, register with them and they'll help people find a job. So um, this actual stock here, this company, uh, I like it because if you actually look at this weekly chart, my goodness, this is really bullish. And I was really pleased to see that this stock i've had it on watch for a while kind of reminds me a little bit of staff but um this one here i've actually never traded um this company and you can see here that it's had a nice 52 week high and are we talking about the same ticker jim yeah dhx oh sorry you know what i was looking at the wrong one whoops hold on hold on I, no, I am looking at the right one. Oh it's my had God. Nice, it had nice weekly highs. Nice, I got confused nice with their website because I'm like, the website says DHI, yeah. but it's really, it is D, it's DHI group. Oh my God, their website's so confusing. Someone should fix that branding. Anyways, um, it has a nice 52 week high, but the reason I also like it as well is because, you know, I always talk to you guys about pocket pivots. This stock is definitely overbought and has a nice pocket pivot. And I think we could see a nice little move coming up on the stock. So currently, on um, this stock here and I again I've never traded it I'm not even in the stock at the moment but I will be definitely looking at it tomorrow uh, during the day I mean this did go as high as 444 today and it had a bit of a pullback here on the close uh, going around 430 so I will definitely be keeping this on watch looking to see if there's gonna be a continuation or if it's going to break today's highs of 444 and then I'll look to potentially take a swing trade position here um, and take advantage of the pullback. So, Jim, on to you with this chart for DHX, which is DHI Group. All right. Well, there's your year's chart. We did have a yearly high of 843. This is a three-year chart. We have had a three-year high of 843, and that was back in the year of 2016, with a nice little resistance up here at 657. On the yearly chart, as Miss Vegas said, it is a one-year high, and we did have a a double top kind of right down here right around the 314 area so it's been a couple weeks since and it's ran all the way up here to 444 today with a support level right around the 371 so that's going to be your low support 371 with the first probably your second support right here around 395 and that first one's going to be right around the 315 area so I'm going to pull up a 20 day and get one look at the 20 day and I'm seeing about the same thing. We got that area right in here that's going that had a little channel between the 371 and the 395. So that's going to be your first channel of support, your low part of it. And your first one's going to be right around this 415 area, and that's where we have a, a nice little trend line that's moved all the way straight up, and it's pulled back here at close to 430, and it had a 444 high today. So we got your second supports right around the 415, and then that first support channel is right here went 371 to 395. And the resistance that we're going to have to break, and I'm going to go to three month, is that 444, 458, and I'm going to go to a year, six months, 458, got to go to a year. So we got the 444, 458, I mean... <laughs> Got to go back to three year. There we are. Now I can get it all planned out. 458, 482, and the 515 area. And that 515 is very important. That's going to be a real hard resistance right there. So we got to break this 444, take it to 458, 
483 and then that 515 and that's what we're looking at and that's going to be DHX and I do like it there's always opportunity out there to find jobs we're in one of the best economies I've seen in my lifetime next one we're going to talk about is going to be OCSL that's correct OCSL okay so OCSL is another one this is called Oak Tree Specialty Lending Corporation they're in the financial services company and um, this one here also making a new 52 week high and uh, this also has I'm telling you these pocket pivots are showing up everywhere I don't know if they're just attracting me specifically but I do a search and scan for pocket pivots and I'm coming up with these picks and this is another nice one this is OCSL and if you look at today's trading um, you'll actually see that the stock did close around 558 I mean it didn't really move that much I mean it opened at 557 went to 575 but you know sometimes these stocks I mean this had over a million shares traded so it's not like it's uncrowded but still room for this to have a continuation on OCSL and I'm actually seeing some activity here after hours uh, some buying on the tape here after hours and um, I am liking the direction of where the stocks headed now where would I see this particular stock coin good question so I'm gonna tell you where I actually think it could go and uh, maybe I'll let you know Jim might want to talk about it first because he likes to do all the charts but um, I will tell you my thoughts in a minute. But Jim, we, you can go right ahead and give us some numbers. Okay. Well, OCSL, we've had, this is a three-year chart right here with a 632 high. We're right now, we closed at 571. We're still there at 571. We got a double top area right here, right around the 589 area. So on the three-year chart, our target would be up here right at 632 with your resistance level at there, there around 604 so I'd be looking for that 632 high and I'm gonna go back just to one more year and see what we got here I'll take it to five years because we're getting close to that three-year high right now now look at a five-year you see a little bit more you see right around the 647 with a resistance up here at 661 and then a nice little hard resistance right here at $7, 695. So your support area is going to be right around 525, your low support. And this is a five year chart. With You see, we had a flat top up here at 1020. So if this keeps motivating, it can go up a lot higher. I'm going to pull it back to the one year. This is how I'm going to see it. We got the 557 for your first second support. Let me go to the 20 day. That'll give me a better look. Yeah, we got the 571 for your first support. Your second one's going to be right down here at 566 with your low third support in this area in this little channel 554 to 557. If we can break that 580, it can move up and I'm going to look at the yearly again. And we got two resistances we got to meet the 580 and the 590. So let's pull back at three year. That'll give me a couple more places to hit. We'd like to see a hit three year high at 632. And that's going to be OCSL. And what do you think, Miss Vegas? Did you plumb it out there? Sorry, my dog was barking, but yep. uh, what, what did you say? I said 632 is going to be your three-year high with a resistance. Yeah, I kind of see that. So I'm looking to see next if this can if this can have a nice continuation. I actually want to see 591, 611, and then if, you know, 611, like again, these 11 points here are really important for me. Um, but I'd love to see this go definitely to 632, and then we'll see what happens after that. But I love those targets. Yeah, pretty solid there 695 would be your your long that's a dollar 20 up from there well that will be really good especially for those of you that like swing trade um a lot of people can't day trade so you know what if you can swing trade uh you may want to check this one out tomorrow and then the next one we're going to talk about is called tnk now that one is um another stock 
and this is called TK Tankers. And that one had really good volume today, but you know, even though it had a lot of volume, it didn't really move that much. So keep a watch on this one as well. I mean, this had another 52 week high. I am seeing buying on the, on the stock after hours all around the 140 mark, which is kind of where the stock opened up. Um, so definitely keep a watch on TNK. And uh, that one there also has a potential expansion break looking to take place and also had my favorite pattern, the pocket pivot and a 52 week high. So it has a lot of bullish indicators on this weekly chart. Uh, so definitely keep this one on your watch as well. And I actually like the price of the stock. I mean, it's a good price. You can position size better and hopefully uh, we'll see some movement here on the stock. Um, and looking maybe for a continuation on this one tomorrow. I don't have a position on the stock. Uh, I will say that there will be some resistance at 152 and also at 165. So Jim, what are your thoughts on TK tankers? Well, I like it. It's an energy play for one and it looks very cheap. Also, they yes. do a lot of things. They're into gas, LNG, LPG, and they got tankers. They're, they're in offshore and they also have services. So that attracts me very much. And it is oversold. We did have a bottom down here at around under a buck at 91.76. We have a resistance here that we broke today at 133.63. Actually, it could be at 138, and that's about where we closed at. Closed at 140. We do have another resistance up here. We have two of them. We have 162. And this is on a three year chart that I'm looking at right now with three year high of 404. I'm drawing in a few resistance lines, a few targets that we can go to. Then I'm going to pull up a yearly. Look at the one year. You see we're at a one year high. Whoa. That don't look right. There we go. We have a double top breakout on a yearly at 135. So that's what we had to break. We do have a doji right here today on this chart, which could mean a higher high coming. And it did break pretty well much at 139 140 with a 142 high low support if it decides not to hold it's going to be right down here at 124.85 for maybe a good buy entry pull up the 20 day i see another support level right here at 129 so it could also hit that and this is how i see it from here on out i see a low low support at 124.85 with your your probably your your second support at 130, 129 to 130 with your first support in this area of 133 to 135 with a resistance breakout of 142. And then I'm going to pull up the yearly again. I got to pull up the three years. See, you got to kind of move around when you're looking at yearly highs. So I got a resistance level here at 150, 170. And if it breaks to 170, we can get into this 188 to two dollar channel. And always remember, this three-year chart has a 404 high, and that's going to be T and K. And I know a couple other stocks were running today that were in shipping, and one of them was Dries. So that there to me, like it was way oversold. It was under four bucks, and it bounced up above that. I mentioned it yesterday, and then today it popped up on the scanner, kind of brought brought it to our attention. And this last one that Miss Vegas has been on, um, Zynga. Yeah, so just what I want to just add something to TK, uh, just for you guys to know. So they did get at one time that a notice from the NYSE that they weren't in, in compliance, but they just got notification last week that as of April 10th, the, um, the, you know that's when they were notified they were not in compliance last month. And now they have been notified that they are in compliance with NYSE and that they can have they are continued listing standards so they're meeting standards they're above the dollar per share and so that is good yep. so keep a watch on the stock for some continuation nice weekly chart there that jim just jim just went over with you guys um so the next one i want to talk about really is zynga because you know zynga is the gaming stock they do all the apps and they also had their earnings very good earnings and um you know what zynga has just so impressed me because 
you know, even though the earnings is over, I mean, look what's happened since the earnings. I mean, the stock's now made another 52 week high. I mean, this is just one of those stocks that you just want to, if you like longer term holds, to me, this is just one of them um, to hold into 2020, in my opinion. Um, it had a nice 52 week high. It was a little, a little bit of a calm after the storm because it had some weakness in the stock where it actually gapped down. But you know what? That was last week. And now this week, it's kind of like recovered and now made a new 52 week high. It is now in a new bullish uptrend. And you know what? How did Zynga trade today? Well, if you take a look at the actual volume, I mean, it had very nice volume, 12.17 million shares. Didn't move again tons and tons because it opened around 619, only went to 631. But you know what? This is a good stock, in my opinion, for a longer term hold, if you like holding things for a longer time. Um, the other thing I want to mention to you on Zynga, uh, which my options team has looked at we looked at some options for january 2021 and these are for the ten dollar calls and there is a huge open interest on these and those are going for 50 cents so you're going to pay 50 dollars per contract but again these do not expire these are leap year these are not even uh, like over a year and a half from now so uh ten dollar strike has huge open interest uh, so if those interest you, you should check them out again january 15 2021 $10 calls on znga and jim what are your thoughts on that beautiful chart definitely had a nice little pullback area not you know really not a big gap down not at all not at all we had big gap down here just uh, 576 and i think i might have mentioned this in the room the other day when it was down there and then we broke out of that double top area which was right around the 628 area and today we created a new high at 631. So this is hold up very well, held up very well since the sell off back here when it was down here right around 332. And we've been watching this for a while along with glue and here and a couple of other uh, stocks that we like following in this sector. So I'd, I'd say if this thing decides, we, we'd like to see it keep the breakout and break above the 631 and create new highs. Uh, I think Vegas even mentioned once, she says this thing might go $10. And I kind of believe her after seeing what she did with glue. It did break up to that $10 area. And we just had a pretty nice little straight ride up from this 30, 332 all the way up. That's almost 100% gain this year on ZNGA. Mm -hmm. So, And you know what? I also want to mention that, you know, ZNGA had a lot of blue trades today. Um and a lot of them were bought around three o'clock and then just a little bit before four. Um, and they're buying, they were buying the shares around the $6 and 24 cent mark. And then around six twenty two. So whenever you see some block trades and I like to follow block trades, you know, six twenty two is where the, let's say, you know, if we don't know if it's a buy or sell, so it's hard to tell in a block trade report, but you can actually wait and see is the stock, going to show continuation after 622 because we don't know if they sold it at 622 or did they make a buy at 622 we don't know because these are block trades from the institutions so what you can do is 622 could be your line in the sand and then you need to monitor is the stock moving beyond the 622 and we're not talking a couple pennies like let's at least see a good 10 15 cent move and you could then go ahead and feel comfortable to take a swing trade, but you could still take a starter and then add on the way up. So keep this on watch. I'm also seeing after hours, I'm actually seeing a buy of, of Zynga at 623 of 103,000 shares. So there is uh, obviously interest on the stock after hours, and uh, we're going to see some uh, potential continuation on Zynga. So keep Zynga in play, no yeah. pun intended. Um, and last but not least, I just want to comment uh, on I wanna, yesterday. I, hmm? I want to give my little supports and resistances on this. Oh, you didn't do that yet? Okay, no. go ahead. Sorry. Um, got a trend line that follows up here from this 522 area, and it's touched down every time on that trend line. And I think we're getting, when the supports are coming in, they're getting to be, I would say, lower highs or higher lows, I mean. So the next low support on this should be right around the 591 area. Well, your first little pivot point area, your second support right around the 6 to 606. 
and we got to break the resistance that we had back here a couple weeks ago right here at 640 and I'm gonna draw this at 636 so let me put that trend line in here and we're gonna put that right there at 636 and that's gonna be your little resistance area so low support 591 a lower high and then we're gonna have the second support in here between six dollars and 606 and your first support is going to be right around 617 with a resistance of breakout at 636 and that includes all the tickers and Miss Vegas said she had one more thing she wanted to speak about yeah so just be really quick so yesterday you know we talked about uh, Cisco had phenomenal earnings they made so much money with their cyber security and then we also talked about LUV which is Southwest Airlines. I mean, they approved, the share, the board approved a $2 billion share buyback. And if you actually listened to the video yesterday and you actually were maybe looking to trade the options or even the stock, I mean, on Cisco, I did talk about the option call. And the option call that I talked about yesterday was to kind of look at something that expires on May 31st and um, at the $53 strike. And if yesterday when I mentioned it, um, the uh, option closed, I think it was around um, $1.20. And even today at the open, I mean, the Cisco was a little hot this morning. So obviously it didn't open at one twenty; It opened at $1.82, the actual option call. So even if you were uh, to, let's say, get an option contract this morning, you would have maybe at the open paid $1.82, even if you paid $2, which is $200 for one contract. Um, this went as high as three forty eight today and closed off at uh, 325 so you still would have made over a hundred dollars just on one contract even either as a day trade or you could have still swinged this trade i'm still bullish on cisco um the other one just to wrap up was on love luv on that one also we talked about uh the may 31st calls for the 52 53 dollar strike same strike 53 those were 65 and they opened at 65 and you know what? Those went all the way to 91. So those, you know, those about, uh, you know, about, about uh, $41 their profit per contract, though. So that's not bad. So congratulations if you took any of those option calls. And uh, you know what? Again, it's all about helping small accounts. So that's it. Anything else, Jim, to add? Yeah. I'm going to give three more resistances on Cisco, and I'm showing the love okay. chart. I'm showing the love chart right now. We did pull right. back a little bit after hours, but um, it did break past my resistance track that I had right here, and I had to break the 52.35, and we run up to the next resistance that I had at 52.75 and touched the 53.05 area. So you're willing to stop these charts at any time and write down these resistances that I have. I have three more, 53.51, 53.84, and 54.56. So I, it, I don't want it to go no lower than that $52 area, and that's where we started out yesterday when we were talking about the aftermarket report on Love, LUV. And then Cisco, we broke real nice on that. We hit the last resistance I had on it. So I'm going to add three more to it. And that was this red line resistance at 55.68. We had to beat that bottom channel right there, and that's the one that I called in the called aftermarket. So your next three are going to be up here on the 20 day and that'll be a 5714 high. And you have the 5616 and the 5670 with the 5714 high on this. And a lot of some traders say, "Well, what you got all them lines on there for?" Well, every one of them lines get hit sooner or later. And they're called supports, pivot points and resistances. So for all you so-called people out there think you know it all that's how we track these down and that's CSCO so pullback target on Cisco now is going to be right here at 55 5498 with a high resistance of 5714 and that's only on a 20 day and that's it for the aftermarket report please subscribe ring that bell and oh by the way if anyone's gonna not like the video by all means, everyone's open, you know, able to like videos or not like them. And that's okay. You're not going to like everything we do and say, but you know what, if you're not going to like a video, then why don't you at least tell us what you don't like? What don't you like? Tell us because, you know, we are here to help people. And if you don't like the video, 
what is it that you don't like so we can improve? I mean, we're exactly. open to feedback, so don't be shy. If you're going to say you don't like it, then at least admit what you actually don't like, right? Maybe don't like the good calls that we're making and they're probably <laughs> trying to short the stocks. Maybe you're a short and you're trying to say that you don't like the video because you're shorting the stock that we're long on. So maybe that's why you're doing that. I don't know. But nevertheless, we take feedback and uh, we're happy to improve. So if you have any suggestions, please share them. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for coming out tonight and watching. Follow, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Or, sorry, we'll see you on Sunday. Have a great day. Yep. And then also on the website, you have we have a place here where you can sign up to the chat room. You get a two-week free trial. We also offer all the ladies that join the room a whole month of free, free to be free in the room. And we also have a Twitter page right here. You can see I Love Stocks on Twitter. Hit it, follow, ring that bell, follow us, and you'll get all of our updates. And same thing with our Stock Twits account. So we want to wish everybody a great trading day on Friday tomorrow. And we'll come out with another report on Sunday. It's usually a little longer, but it, we like to get the whole week prepared. And every time, every day in the room, I'm starting to give updates on each of our aftermarket reports throughout the day. So this is. I love stocks. Today's date is May 16th, 2019, and we love stocks.